In this lesson, we're going to talk about solving one-step equations. Now, solving one-step equations all comes down to what we call inverse operations. And inverse is kind of a fancy word for saying opposite. So we're going to be talking about opposite operations, okay? So if you are working with an equation that has addition or subtraction, these are inverse operations. Doesn't that make sense? Add and subtract are kind of opposites of each other. Um, like 2 plus 3 is 5, but 5 minus 3 is 2. So they're related. So if you have an, an equation that has addition, you can inverse that using subtraction. And if you have an equation with subtraction, you can inverse that with addition. What are some other operations you can think of that are related and possibly inverse operations? Multiplying and dividing, it's the same idea. Multiplying is an inverse of division, and division is an inverse of multiplication. So if you have an equation that has multiplication in it, you're going to divide in order to inverse or cancel that operation. Okay? So remember, inverse. They're opposite operations, and it will make terms cancel. That's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to try to cancel things in order to, to isolate a variable. So let's look at this first example. We're trying to solve for x, which means we want to isolate the x. We want to get x all by itself. So what is happening with the x? What do you see that is happening to the x? Well, we see this plus 2. Okay. Now, since there's a plus 2 that's an addition, what is the inverse of addition? Subtraction. So we're going to subtract 2. And the thing about equations is we have to keep things equal on both sides. So I like to draw a line through my equal sign. And so whatever I do on one side, I have to do to the other to keep things balanced, to keep things equal. That's why it's an equal sign and it's called an equation. Okay. So if I'm subtracting 2 here in order to cancel out this positive 2, I'm going to subtract 2 on the other side as well. Here's my big line to separate that step. So a positive 2 and a negative 2, that makes 0. So this cancels out. What do I have left on this side of the equation? x. Now on this side, I'm going to simplify the 9 minus 2, which is 7. So my answer is x equals Seven. Okay, I want you to try this example too. Thinking about what we just did and what we just talked about with inverse operations and enter your answer. Okay, just to clarify, we are solving for x. This is x plus 4, so that's addition. What is the inverse of addition? Subtraction. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides of my equation. Here's my big line to separate my step. My 4's cancel, and I have x equals, and when I combine this negative 7 and negative 4, I get negative 11. There's my answer. Example 3. This time I have x minus 3 equals negative 7. So this time we're talking about subtraction. What is the inverse operation for subtraction? Addition. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. And remember, it's both sides of the equal sign. So now I have these 3's here, negative 3 and positive 3. That makes 0, so it's going to cancel. So we have x equals negative 7 plus 3 is going to make negative 4. I have x all by itself, so my answer is x equals negative 4. Try this one, again, doing the exact same thing we just did, and then enter your answer. Okay, just to clarify. This is saying x minus 8. So 
What is the inverse operation for subtraction? Addition. So we're going to add what to both sides? We're going to add 8 to both sides of the equal sign. What do I have left? I have x here and on this side, 23. So my answer is x equals 23. In example 5, what operation is going on between the negative 5 and the x? It's a multiply. What is the inverse operation for multiply? Divide. And here's how I want you to show division from now on. We're going to use a fraction bar. That's really what a fraction bar means, is division. So I'm going to divide by negative 5, again on both sides of my equal sign. And what happens is, negative 5 divided by negative 5 becomes a 1. And 1x is the same as just x. So essentially, those negative 5s cancel. Just like previously we were able to cancel with addition and subtraction, you can cancel multiplication using division because they are inverse operations. Then I'm just going to do the division. 40 divided by negative 5 is going to be a negative 8. Okay, so I want you to try this one, example 6, doing the exact same thing. Think about what your operation is and how do you inverse it, and then enter your answer. Okay, so what is the operation happening between the 7 and the x? It's a multiply. And what is the inverse operation for multiply? Divide. What are we going to divide by? 7. What happens with the 7 divided by 7? It cancels, and I'm left with just x, and then 56 divided by 7 is 8. Beautiful. Moving on. Now, what operation does this fraction bar show? It's division. And what is the inverse operation for division? Multiplication. So we're going to multiply by this 6. And remember, something a lot of students forget, especially on this type of problem, is that we have to do that on both sides of the equal sign. So I multiplied by 6 here. I'm also going to multiply by 6 over here. Now, think about this. This becomes 6x divided by 6. So you're taking 6 divided by 6, which makes 1, which we said essentially cancels those 6s. What do I have left on this side? I just have x. And then we're going to multiply. Negative 2 times 6 makes negative 12. I have x by itself, so this is my answer. x equals negative 12. Try example 8, doing the exact same thing. Okay, so what does this fraction bar mean? It means division. And what's the inverse operation for division? Multiplication. So we're going to multiply by what? By 8 on both sides. And what happens with the 8's over here? They cancel, which means I just have x left over. And then x is going to equal what? Negative 24. Beautiful. OK, these last examples tend to freak a few people out because there's fractions involved. And I know fractions can be a little scary, but I'm going to show you a few extra steps you can take to make this super simple on yourself, okay? 
So first of all, let's talk about what does that fraction bar mean? A fraction bar means division, right? So this is saying 2 divided by 5 times x. What if we were to cancel the division, that divide by 5? Well, if we wanted to inverse a divide by 5, what operation would we need to use? We would want to multiply. So this says divide by 5. We're going to multiply by 5. Okay, now think about this. What is 5 times 2? It's 10, and 10 divided by 5 is just 2. So really, these 5's cancel. So what do I have left? 2 times x, or 2x. And on the other side, it's 30. So I have 2x equals 30. Now, what operation is happening with the 2 and the x? They're multiplying. What is the inverse of multiply? Divide. So we're going to divide by 2 on both sides. That makes the 2 cancel, and we get x equals 15. Now, if you wanted a simpler way to do that, let me rewrite the problem. You could use another method and make this all one step. When you're dealing with fractions and you want to inverse a fraction, you can use the reciprocal. which means flip the fraction. So if I wanted to cancel this fraction, I could use the reciprocal. I could flip the fraction. So instead of saying 2 over 5, I could make that 5 over 2 and multiply by that on the other side. Now the 5's cancel and the 2's cancel, and we just have x. And here, 6 times 5 is 30 divided by 2 is 15. It doesn't matter which way you solve that. As you can see, we get the same answer either way. 1 is a one-step, truly one-step problem of multiplying by that reciprocal. The other, we're canceling the denominator of the fraction. We're inversing division with multiplication and then dividing a coefficient. You get to the same place, so it's up to you. So let's look at example 10, and I'm just going to do this one with you. It doesn't hurt to see it one more time. Let's start with the reciprocal this time. So what would the reciprocal of 4 over 3 be? The reciprocal of 4 over 3 means we just flip it, which would become 3 over 4. And we're going to multiply by that 3 over 4 on both sides. That makes the 3's cancel and the 4's cancel, and I'm left with just x. Then I can take the negative 8 times 3, which is a negative 24, and divide that by 4. And what is negative 24 divided by 4? It's negative 6. So that's the faster one-step way of using the reciprocal. Now if I do that again, Again, what does this fraction bar mean? It means division. And what's the inverse of division? Multiplication. So what would I want to multiply by to cancel the divide by 3? I want to multiply by 3 on both sides. We have to remember that part. So the 3's are going to cancel. And what am I left with on this side? 4x. And what does it equal? What is the last step we're going to do to inverse this 4 times x? We're going to divide by 4 on both sides. And when we do that, I get x equals negative 6. So it is an additional step, but if you really struggle with fractions, it might be the, something to try.